one thing about living in Santa Carla I never could stomach. All the damn vampires. Hey, hello there guys. Welcome in to J Dizzle's Spine Tizzles. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing seven episodes throughout this whole week of Halloween. Uh, each episode is going to be around about five minutes long, fo each focusing on a different horror film. I'm going to end in a particularly nostalgic one for Halloween night. For the first episode, uh, we're going to focus on an absolute vampire classic. It's the 35th anniversary of the film this year. It is The Lost Boys. Written by Jeffrey Bohm, who also scripted the film adaptation of The Dead Zone and adapted from a story idea by James Jeremias and Janice Fisher. The Lost Boys tells the story of Lucy, played by Diane Weist, and her two boys, Michael, played by Jason Patrick, and Sam, played by Corey Haim, moving in with their grandpa, played by Bernard Hughes, and becoming acquainted with the town of Santa Carla. The boys soon discover that the party's central beachside paradise is actually a nest for a coven of vampires led by the head honcho David, played by Kiefer Sutherland. As Michael gets involved more than he should, he becomes a child of the night, and so begins a quest to kill the head vampire and break the curse. So with my own personal experience of The Lost Boys, I was very much a late bloomer to it. I was always aware of it being a cult classic. But I didn't watch it until I was in my early 20s at some point, I think perhaps late teens. And even then, I don't really remember very much of it. I, I think it was probably a film that was very much on in the background. Only recently, as it's been re-released in cinemas, 4K restoration, that has been my second viewing. And I have to say, I just fell in love with it, watching it on the big screen. Director Joel Schumacher was hot off the heels of directing the romantic drama St. Elmo's Fire. And when asked why he direct went to direct this film, uh, he literally just responded, vampires are hot. And he's not kidding. They, they really, particularly in this film, the vampires are so seductive and when researching the film he does seem to have been a very integral part of pushing the, the punky kind of rocky vibe to it. Something that really appealed to me about this film is how kind of hyperkinetic it is at times. It is very really psychedelic. Part of that is due to the cinematography by Michael Chapman who had previously worked on Scorsese films such as Raging Bull and Taxi Driver. The editing um, down to Robert Brown who worked on Omen 2 and the 1979 version of the Amityville Horror. Both of those working together really create this kind of trippy kind of atmosphere throughout the majority of the film. Most of the sequences are like that and what makes it stay in the mind I think the costume design by Susan Becker who had previously previously worked with the director on St Elmo's Fire and went on to work with him in Flatliners um, also worked on True Romance so great costume design the vampires just look so fucking cool in it a few thousand of the local residents of where the film was shot were hired to, to be the extras so a lot of the punks you see sort of wandering the streets in it um, and a lot of the, even just the family types were actual residents of the town that they filmed in. Performances in this film are so good. I mean, you have Star played by Jamie Gertz, who is just so beautiful in it. And the supporting role by Alex Winter, very much known for his role in Bill and Ted, um, playing Marco here. And of course, the Frog Brothers played by Jamis Jameson Newlander, sorry, and Corey Feldman are so good and I'm certain Christian Bale got a lot of inspiration for his Batman voice from Corey Feldman in this film. Really iconic role here for Kiefer Sutherland in potentially his breakout role. When watching an interview with Kiefer Sutherland uh, he said he was massively inspired by Billy Idol for the haircut. Joel Schumacher really wanted him to have long hair for the role so they had a compromise and basically Kiefer had the long hair at the back and the Billy Idol spiked punky hairstyle at the front. I don't think this was an actually where the mullet first came into play, but I do think this was like a massive style at the time and I think this helped to popularise it somewhat. The soundtrack is of course 
legendary as well. You've got Cry Little Sister, Walk This Way, the Run, Run DMC version of Aerosmith's song, Echo and the Bunnymen, Bunnymen version of People Are Strange. It's so good. The soundtrack's amazing. To watch it, you can potentially find it at your local cinema at the moment, screening around Halloween time. Streaming wise, you can rent or buy it on Amazon Prime. And it is, of course, also available on DVD and Blu-ray. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you again tomorrow for another J Dizzle's Spine Tizzle.